falling in love! Now, before uh, getting into death first, I think it's important to talk about Let It Die, which is this uh, roguelike where a player scales the uh, Tower of Barbs. Uh, the Earth is uh, affected by these massive tectonic shifts. It's called the uh, Earth Rage. Uh, many brutal resource wars take place afterwards, and supposedly at the top of the tower is this great treasure to be had. And so to get to the top, it's uh, you're going to be gathering lots of resources, materials for uh, research and development, because your weapons, uh, your armor, it's destructible. The stuff you get through R&D is much more durable, has much better stats through improvement. And there was some PvP, but you know, it would be most <clears throat> mostly through raiding bases of other players, sometimes sending uh, a character you made to go attack another player while they're exploring, but that one would be uh, AI controlled. The core of the game is single player experience and let it die, though they are the online elements, but this made Death vs. still something of a surprise, because, you know, sequels generally don't deviate much from the original. But I think even dedicated Let It Die players would be put off by a game where you just went through another tower climbing game, but you had to start over from scratch. Especially after sinking lots of time and money that could easily be done as Let It Die could be a little bit tricky sometimes. You know, they might even cannibalize their own audience, split the base with two fundamentally similar games. Now, for Deathverse, we had 16 player free for alls uh, participating in this uh, game show akin to The Running Man or The Hunger Games. Now, Deathverse built off the previous story with uh, humans colonizing Mars and seemingly thriving on the rich resources of this new planet. And World War V is alluded to multiple times in item descriptions, but I'm unsure if this was a recent conflict and the game is set during a post-war boom, or if the war was made was what made colonizing Mars a do-or-die proposition. Now, in addition to the PvP focus in Deathverse, weapons that you got through are, were permanent, they didn't break from use, and uh, what the player wore was purely cosmetic, no pros or cons either way. And now, the weapons, even those of the same type, like katanas, the uh, spears, they did have differences between them. Uh, but the combat was uh, melee based, even though a, f a few of those weapons had like a special ability to use a send a projectile. Now, players had shields that could be used at will. When broken, the player could not fight as effectively, they'd be very vulnerable. Uh, there was an option to use up all your shields energy to send this uh, energy bullet that uh, could hit an enemy for a little bit of damage, or if there was some exposed metal nearby, it could short out their shield entirely and put them in that vulnerable state. Uh, it also uh, could uh, detonate destructible platforms. Now, health could be restored by successful attacks on an enemy, so even if you got whooped pretty hard, you could turn things around, and the game definitely encouraged an aggressive style of play, but if you were crafty, you could still win without memorizing frames, combos, and you know, things that are synonymous with fighting games. However, in July of 2023, the servers were closed up 
with the hope of bringing the game back in the future. At the time, the talk was early part of 2024, but who knows if that will be the case. You know, so what went wrong? Now, I don't have any insider insights. I'm not the most technically proficient guy here. But, in Let It Die, the PvP it being done through the AI, I imagine didn't have the same kind of bandwidth demand, same kind of infrastructure or whatnot, compared to, say, having 16 players, up, well, up to 16 players, all fighting at the same time, multiple matches going on, ideally, I would think. Now, of course, uh, there's supposed to be 16 people, so bots would uh, fill in the gaps, and this was the only thing that kept the game going up to the time the servers were closing, because otherwise it would have been entirely unplayable. And I think with this increased uh, demands as far as uh, data and whatnot, they I think they shot themselves in the football. They needed to bring in more money compared to, say, what they were doing with Let It Die. And as I understand it from a friend uh, who's played uh, for <coughs> Fortnite, uh, Death First borrowed that same business model. Uh, the death metal currency uh, was how you uh, paid for uh, battle passes, how you paid for uh, unique cosmic it <coughs> cosmetic items that were sold a la carte. And a diligent player could get lots of neat stuff from the battle passes, but that could be off-putting to a casual player or someone who isn't sure they could get the full value out of it. Now, never mind prices for individual items, they were stupidly expensive. For the limited seasonal, seasonal items, an argument could be made, but the room decor stuff, you could be charged up to $8 worth of death medals for items nobody else would be able to see. And on the PS4, uh, which I was playing, the menu covered the posters so you could hardly even see it. Until the sort of 2.5-ish season, individual cosmetics would be displayed uh, one item for each category, if I remember right. So like one poster, one outfit, etc, etc. So to me, instead of creating urgency to buy these items, I think it would push a player to hold on to their death medals in case something cooler showed up. There was also the increments in which uh, death medals were sold versus what items would cost. And as I'm understanding that uh, there's sort of this scummy tactic uh, other games would use to get players to sink more money than they would if they just bought enough for the cheapest item they wanted. I mean... All in all, this meant uh, players who didn't pay in couldn't bootstrap to get cool stuff. You know, there was no way to legitimately get death medals to cover even the cheapest item if we're excluding the apology medals that we were somewhat generous, I will admit. But each season there was a challenge which unlocked a weapon skin, and in the season pass there were limited rewards at low levels for non-playing, non-paying players. However, this still meant free players didn't have much of a feedback loop of effort and reward. And then there was also the issue of cheating. Asymmetrical fights would happen often when a bunch of players were all together in a small area, but there were plenty of players who openly colluded in team-ups. Not only was this a dick move, but it was supposed to be against the rules. Supposed to be. You know, it seems like the devs totally caved on that because enforcing the rule would mean 
banning a lot of the top ranked players. Now towards the end there was an option to block individual players but this was too little too late. You know. Now when you're first playing ranked matches were good because when you started you would be going against players of similar skill and even you could learn your ways there but with the eagle rank if they weren't explicitly teaming up they were all chummy with each other by virtue of playing the game all the damn time with each other and this brings me to the game modes there was ranked exhibition and room matches which for the most part were just exhibition matches that were behind a paywall anything outside of the 16 player battle royale did not exist and even then death first really took its sweet time rolling out features uh, now contrast that with uh, fortnite you know i've seen videos of guys doing some really creative stuff with uh, creation like i guess uh, one video a friend shared with me or, I was able to play a song through all the various things he had set up. And arguably it was like they were trying to monetize an open beta. Now, back onto money, or in-game money. As with uh, Let It Die, the players earned kill coins, which could be used to buy low-tier R&D materials. And the primary purpose really was for the cost of developing new weapons, developing new forms of cosmetic items, because weapons and armor were destructible and let it die, kill coins had an everyday utility, because, you know, like I said, scavenge gear was never as good as stuff you could develop yourself. In Deathverse, kill coins had no such utility. So by the time you got the materials needed, you didn't even have to think about the kill coin cost, making the resource entirely redundant. I mean, that all said, I still very much enjoyed the game. The aesthetics, the gameplay itself, the hints of story made me very curious. In material outside of the game, there's an elaborate explanation which made me wonder if Deathverse was meant to satirize esports. I really do hope the game returns, or at the very least something similar enough to scratch that itch comes out. And well, that, that's all my thoughts on Deathverse. Thank you all for watching. Have a nice day.